the key card. Has a respectable top speed. Acceleration is fantastic. It turns like a truck, and that's all you need to know. The guns were hit pretty hard, but uh, very inconsistent in my end at least. I've heard a lot of reports of people always one-shotting, but I can't back up that claim. So now the LA9 is dead and I have a slow FAF behind me. I can keep going up and there's no way he will catch me. I have a lot of altitude here and my energy is a lot better. So I go in for the kill. He, yeah, he likes to go head on as back as do, I break off. There is no need for me to do this. I can just keep looping over and there's no way he's getting a shot. We'll keep doing this until he's drained of energy. I'm slowly draining myself. But I have a lot more speed than him, so it doesn't really matter. FNF coming in, not too worried. He's probably gonna pull up again, and he does. Otherwise, he probably would have stayed alive till his friend ca came in. But it's too bad. And that's one. Bullying props in this thing is something you will do a lot, that's why I'm showing you. But at the same time, it's not the hardest thing to do. You just have to be a little bit careful, because you do turn pretty poorly. And you see, he's going after me, but there's no way he's catching me. FNF goes about 670, I can go 800 easily. X15 diving on me, I'm gonna pitch up into him. Razor's right behind him, so if he tries to go after me, he's probably gonna be toast. I go up, stay a bit close range. He's too focused on me. And he gets popped. Now we're alone with the FDF that blew all the speed trying to catch me, went up a bit. His top speed is 670, but that doesn't mean he'll maintain it easily. Because he, he clearly won't. It's clear that this FDF has uh, very little chance to survive here. So Razor will just uh, go away. Trying to dive under him, just to close the gap a bit quicker. He turned. Again, he'll go head on, because he's an FHF. Especially the 1Bs are very... They really like doing it, I don't really know why. Probably because of the guns. And the fact that they're facing a jet. So it does leave them with little options. Trying to make him pull for me. He doesn't do it, so I dive under him again. The flaps rip at around 580. Everything above it, they will instantly rip the combat flaps, that is. And he's, he's done. On to the next game. I'm a bit lower. Well, I don't really have to say that, you can clearly see it, but I'm fast. I'm doing this so he might think that I'm very slow, or that he has more energy because he's above me. That's a mistake a lot of people make, especially in jets. But he didn't really seem to fall for it. He went head on and now he's diving away, blowing even more speed. I pretend to dive on him. And you see that he, he really thought I was going to, so he pitches after me. I don't have a lot of fate, he'll hit me at those ranges, so I won't dodge a lot, which bleeds even more speed. I'll just keep diving on him. It's the same principles with the FHF, where I have energy over the other one, a lot of speed, a lot of altitude. And I will just, I will be able to do this all day. I'm not showing you this because this is very skillful. I'm just showing you this because it's routine work. And if I show you one example, I don't think that it supports it well. I like to have multiple instances so it, it shows that it works. Not that I do one and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this, this works 24-7. Try it. And then you get killed. Because I, I died 50 times doing it as well. But you don't see that because this is YouTube. He comes in the other one. The 80s seem to be not firing at all, so I stuck a bit longer. The second I see his shots come out, I will break off. Don't stick too long, P80s, F80s, anything with 50 cals. These engines are extremely fragile, and the wingtips fall off really easily as well. And right here, you can tell that the P51 is slowly but surely losing all of its speed. I'm not completely sure what this F80 is trying to do, but yeah, whatever. Didn't manage to pull that in time. 
going up again. I could have looped over him right there, but he had enough energy to pull after me. So I would probably stall right in his guns. I pulled through him. Right now I have a lot more separation. I was trying to stall him out. He is smart enough not to do it, but he doesn't really have a lot of options here. He tried his best. I had a lot more energy, but at the start he, he screwed it up by diving away. I still had more energy than him if he didn't, but that's a mistake he made, but he couldn't have done a lot to begin with. Right here it's against Jets. I just want to show you this. Th these are the, the people that are probably new to, to 7.0. Because they seem to all be really eager to stall after me. It's 2v4 as of right now. My teammates won't do a lot of here. What I'm doing right here is I'm stalling them out. I'm using the, the, the clouds to get unspotted. So I have a lot more leeway to stall out. Since they can't really see me. It's hard to get your guns on. It's hard to judge the distance. And I dive back down. Look for the most opportune target. Couldn't really pick one because they didn't get spotted. Completely whiff my shot. Overlap. These guns are too fast for, for their own good. I'm not really used to them yet. Especially considering the rate of fire. It happens when you shoot one in front and one behind of the enemy. Which makes it kind of frustrating, especially with the low ammo count. And they do give quite a bit of hits and crits. Which makes it quite annoying sometimes. Luckily in this game they, they worked pretty well. Alrighty, I'm just I'm trying to get as much altitude as I can. I have a lot of acceleration over them. As well as energy from the start. So if I keep going up like that. If they don't separate and gain speed. Then they will never catch me. And they keep trying to pull for me. Which is a very big mistake. What they had to do, well, all they had to do was just fly away in a straight line, gain some speed. Because they are faster than me. Every every one of them. Evaders go quite a bit faster, they turn better. All I have over them is acceleration. And probably one shot potential on my guns. But 50 kills still do plenty of damage. And they're a lot easier to use. So I would actually say that their guns are better as well. I don't get triggered, I'm not <laughs> calling these guns shit or anything. It's just a lot more, especially with the, the ammo load you have, which is not a lot, especially when you're stuck. One one gun with 50 rounds, that look quite inaccurate, even when spaded. I don't know what this Horton is doing. He came in once and he just he just flew away. I never saw him again. I'm doing very wide, slight climbs. Pretend you don't see them on the right. And then pull up last second and they mostly don't get the shot on you. Of course you have a lot of 50 gals on you when you're fighting 3 people at once. But you have to do what you gotta do. And now all of them are slow. I'm still going 400 at 4k. Well, pretty much 1, 2k. Because it's Afghan. They spawn, you spawn at 1.3 kilometers. That's another one. Just look how slow they are now. Because they kept trying to turn with me. They bleed a lot of speed because they turn better. And they have quite bad XL. The last merge. I'm trying to make him go for me here. But he realizes they are capping the, the airfield. Which makes them auto win. And he'll just run away. I am actually kind of sad that I... Wasn't able to clean him up, but hey, it is what it is. It flies a lot like the C2B in that regard. It has very good acceleration. The top speed is good, but not the best. And it doesn't really turn. And this is a very good example of a pure energy fighter. Because you, you can't really turn with people. You can't try to reverse. Well, you can try, of course, but it's not the best idea. It's really reliant on its engines. Of which I'll show you another example right here. We were going the same speed. So I did a slight climb at 600 IAS. His top speed is about 600 IAS at his altitude. Maybe a bit maybe a bit higher. 700 on the deck. 
roughly. And I do the slide climb away, and then I pull over him. I'm a lot higher than him right now, and if he decides to pull after me... He did pull up quite a bit, because we were on the deck going 600. I can really see here the, the amount of energy I have over him right now. I did completely whiff that shot. I don't have any excuses for that, I just I didn't uh, calculate his turn well enough. And you see the separation right now. We were going the same speed on the deck about uh, one and a half minutes ago. You just have to take my word on that, because it's a lot of boring flying away. But now he's completely energy trapped. And there's very little he can do. The problem with the Yak-15 though, they turn really well and they're very tedious to hit. They're very small. And you just... It's a P even. On his 123. I was hoping I could get the shot here, but it doesn't turn well enough. It just simply doesn't. The rest of this fight wasn't really worth showing. They kept flying away and I got a crit in the clouds because he didn't see me. And yeah, that, that's about it. I just showed you the start of it to show you the the differences in acceleration, the differences in climb rate, how bricky it is. It, it's a truck. It, it really is a low tier C2B in almost every regard. The only difference is that the guns are a lot faster and that they give more hits. And right there, you just... I couldn't pull with him. Sure, I do wait way too long to shoot, because I only have 14 rounds left. But they're very tedious to hit. And that's all I have for now. I do have uh, an idea what I want to do. So I want to make a jet guide, but from start to finish. So say I want to start with uh, the USA. I will start off with the P-80. I'll do a video on that. Then I will go to the F-84B, show you how to fly that, and it's a very good starter jet. It really teaches you the way of the Sabre without actually flying one. Then we will go to the F-84G, if you want to just improve, if you just want an easier time to, to grind. But you can also go to the A-5, which you will skip, you will not touch that thing. And then you will go for the F-2. Then we will go for the full spading process, we will go to the full uh, train of thought, different BRs. I really want to do a full coverage of jets so you know where to grind towards. I have a lot of people ask, should I go for the F-84G, should I go for the F-80C, should I skip this plane, should I grind for this? And I want to make an all-inclusive quote-unquote guide. So I will do the, the tech trees, where to grind, what to pick. And I will do a, a video on every respective plane that I mentioned. If you do have ideas for this, if you do like this idea, then do let me know and also really let me know which plane you want me to take out first. I took the Kika as the, the starter one, mostly because the Japanese tech tree is very bare boned. You have one line, so it's very clear which plane you should go for first. You, know, you might take the Auto Whitus to grind, but if you really want the Sabre, you will go for the Kika line. You have very little options. So I started off with this one. I, I am looking forward to the feedback on the, for the next videos. And I'll hope you'll see you in the next ones.